And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, today we're taking a look at a game called Ships, which has a really cool cover. I'm, I'm a big fan of how cool this cover looks. Unfortunately, the rest of the game does not look as good as this cover, but that's okay. This is a game from Tree Frog Games designed by Martin Wallace. Martin Wallace does a lot of games based on transportation. Probably his most famous is Age of Steam on trains, but he's also done automobiles, and he's done a lot of different games on transportation. Uh, this one here is ships. It takes you from through the eras of ships, from just the long boats all the way out to steamships in the 19th century. And so in this game, you're trying to get points by basically having trade and warships and controlling different cities and having trade routes. And it kind of takes you throughout history. Let's take a look. In this game, there's a large board here in the middle of the table, and you'll notice on the outside of the board, there are different areas that uh, show what age we're currently in. So you can see here that uh, everyone's going to start here in age one. Now in age one, we're still using the galleys, and so when players place ships, they're going to be starting in age one. So when I place a ship here, I can put one there for free. When I place a ship here, I also have to pay a food. So this is a, a merchant ship and a warship, and this is all age one. Eventually, we're gonna be able to place in age two. To do that, you need to pay navigation points. This is a resource that players will be collecting. However, the cost to go into age two is reduced by one for the number of ships in age one. So let's say there's three ships over here in age one. This cost is now two. To, uh, navigation points or might even be free and then once that happens we start putting stuff in age two rather than age one you always put stuff in the current age no matter who's the first person to go there and eventually as time goes by you'll see down here in age five we switch to sailing ships now the first person to put a ship in a new age is going to get points they're going to get in this case they get five points here also anyone who is two ages behind so in this case, age four, and then we go back to age three up here. Anyone in age three will lose a point for each ship they have. I guess you're, you're lagging behind technologically. Anyone who's two ages be behind, or three ages behind, I'm sorry, will lose two points for each ship there, and then those ships are removed. So you, can't, you won't always lose points for ships forever and ever. Now the whole point to this here is based on a player's board. They start here with some available stock, some cubes that each player has. They have some of their own color, and then they also have some free action cubes. You can use these cubes whenever you want as an extra action. At the beginning of each turn, they're going to, depending on what era we're in, they're going to bring down a certain number of cubes for actions. And once we're in the sailing and then the steamship era, you'll also get some extra cubes from the stock. These are free actions. There are different actions that players can take here, and the cost for the action is one cube, either blue or, and I mean, that's my player color, or black. And although the actions for the black cubes often have an extra cost added to them. Some of the actions are pretty simple. Take a gold, take two navigation tokens, sell goods, um, get retrieve merchants, where you're going to pull all your cubes as you spend cubes. You'll be putting them here on the board, and you can pull these off, or you can pull any number of cubes off the board. So get your cubes back to use them again. But the actions that most of the, th the time that will take place are placing a ship, where you place a ship like I just showed you, into a region. Um, you can remove ships, you can use them again. Or you can upgrade ships, which is basically just removing a ship and then moving it to the next age. Now, when you place a ship, you're going to place it, like I said, in a merchant or in the, um, the warship box. And then you're going to place something on the board. Now everyone starts here in age two, there's an area two, and then you go to area three, area four, all the way up to area seven. When you place a merchant ship on out, you take one of your cubes and you can put this in any region on the board that's been opened. At the beginning of the game, region two is open, but eventually all the regions will be open. 
When you place it there, usually you will get a good of that type. If you place it on a food spot, you'll get two goods of that type. Now you have to note that when you get goods, you're going to be putting them here in your warehouse. And your warehouse only has so many spots for different things. But when you place a warship, you're going to put a city on the board and you'll take off one of your discs, which can make your warehouse go up. Same thing here with your bank. You know, you only have room here for two coins, but as you put more cities on the board, your bank will have more space to put coins into it. So when you put out a merchant cube, you'll put that out and you'll get uh, of good. There is only one difference to that, and that's spice, which is right here. When you put something in a spice box, you will instead take another cube, put it in a spice box, immediately score seven points, and get a coin, which is really powerful. The problem is you basically lose that cube for the rest of the game and won't be able to use it. When you place a city, you're going to just put a disc into that city as you place those out, and that will give you a bonus. This one here gives me another cube. This one, two navigation points. This is a free action cube. This one here, three points. This one, two coins. And they will give you different things. And so that's the main reason you play ships and upgrade ships because it lets you put out either a merchant cube or it lets you put out a city. Now, eventually, someone's going to want to build into the next area, into area three. When they do that, they're going to have to pay navigation points, just like when you upgrade an area in ships. However, and, and here the cost is decreased for each city that's out. So eventually players will be able to do that. Once someone goes into the new area, the old area is immediately scored. Each player is going to get points for each disc and each cube equal to the number of the area. So here blue has six points, black would get two, red would get two. The only difference to that would be if you have a city where you also have a cube, that city's worth an extra point for each cube that's in that same city. And that's basically the main rules of the game. There's some other things here too. You'll notice that once we get up into this area here, there's ways to get these factories. When you have one of these, you can use it when you take a good by placing a cube on the board to take two of that good. This, this, this token then is then used, but it kind of recycles back just like the cubes do. You also have the opportunity down here, like I said, you'll be able to put coins. Eventually when you, you will get extra coins and you have no room to put them, you can always pay two coins to the bank for a victory point at different points in time. And then there's this action here, take a card. Now at the beginning of, of each of the eras, whether it's the sailing era, the galley era, or the steamship era, you're going to draw 12 random cards and put these cards out somewhere face up on the board. Players can take these cards, and these cards, I guess one just gives you a cube. This one here lets you get all your ships from one level, but it also has a cost of a coin. Sometimes they let you take a certain action, like this one here, gain two gold and two victory points for each merchant cube you have in a food square. That's not on the board. Other times that you take a, an action that's currently on the board, like here, take an upgrade ship action, but this doesn't, I don't ha I can just take the card rather than pay the extra coin. So the card is slightly better. And these cards will change as you go into different eras. As you can see, when you get to the steam era, here's an industry card and we have cards refrigeration, get four victory points for each card you have in the Western box, etc. Now, as time goes by, you'll be moving in areas. Eventually, the areas go off the map. And they're worth more points. You can see area six. When you get to area seven here, every time you put a cube down, you just get six points, and that will score. The, the game will end when there are five ships here in age 11, in this final area, and then everyone gets one last turn. Everyone has the same number of turns, I should say. And then you'll score whatever area you're in, which will probably be area seven here. But let's say you had only made it to area six, you would then score that area. And whoever has the most points is the winner. You'll immediately sell all your goods. Speaking of selling goods, there is a chart here. You can sell goods. You can see the goods have different costs. Some of them, when you sell the goods, this two, three, and three. But you can also, at any time as a free action, you can always exchange an oil for a black cube, a free action. You can always exchange one of these for a navigation point and two points. And you can always exchange wine for a coin if you're desperately in need of it. So that's basically the gist of the game. Okay, let's start with a, a few negative things. First of all, I mentioned the cover was beautiful, but the, and the ships around the outside of the board, I like how they look. But the graphics were kind of, they're functional, but they're just, 
I don't know. They almost look like they were designed in a Microsoft Paint or something. They just, they just look a little bland. And there's one, the, the each age is two boxes of ships. And as they go around the board, it's really easy to lose track which ships are in which age. I wish they had made like the box with a red line around it or something. Um, that's not, that's a minor thing, but just something I noticed. And the rule book itself, you know, I understood the rule book. It makes sense. Although there were a couple concepts, which I think could have been more clearly done. And the one major concept about putting a ship out, the game's like, now this is a very complex concept. So here we go. Be prepared to the point where they actually give you a flow chart on how to do that action. And that action is really simple. You place a ship out. You then can put out a cube or a disc and you can go up a level and spend points, but it's not that complex. And the, and the rule book actually made the game seem harder than it really is. In fact, this is more, this is upper midweight for a Martin Wallace game, but it's not one of it's not as heavy as say brass or even Age of Steam. And this game is very solid. I, I, I enjoy it. I like the different actions. I like the cards. The cards are really good. You can only do one card per turn, which makes sense because usually the cards are like, ooh, I want to do that. There's only 12 per age, and so you want to grab those. You have to kind of keep your flow of cubes going. When do you reset and get your cubes back? When cubes are in the area, after it scores, they don't really do any good for you, so you might as well pull them off. But when are you going to pull them off? There's only two or three, so is that a waste of an action to pull cubes off? And I like that. I like that the game keeps things flowing. Um, there's a little bit of downtime in a four-player game, but not too bad. And there's this constant watching what everyone else does because one person's going to keep advancing the ships. Why wouldn't you? Not only when you advance the ships do you get points, but you cause your opponents to lose points. You might lose some points yourself, but it's better to get points and lose points than have someone else get points and you simply lose points. And you have to be cautious about putting out too many ships in one era because if you do that, you better have some way of getting those out because eventually, or moving them up, because eventually someone's going to score and you're going to lose a pile of points for those. And then when you put out things, do you spend the food to put out warships and take the cities? Cities are slightly better than the, than the trading ships, but at the same time, the trading ships give you those goods, which you can sell for coins, which is victory points or other things. Um, the, the ships, the, the, the cities themselves, though, uh, can give you extra cubes. And so there's, like I said, there's, there's nothing, you know, like, wow. In fact, there's nothing in this game when I played it I, that I can think of that's new. This game has a lot of similarities to automobiles, although i rather play this 10 times before I play automobiles. And it has different things like when you take the discs off, that's a cool concept, and put them on cities, but it's not new to this game. You know, when you put cubes out and get resources and sell resources, again, I don't think there's anything new, but it's solid. It's a solid game, and it doesn't take that long to play. The box says uh, it can go up to two hours, and I think that's reasonable, 90 minutes to two hours, which for Martin Wallace is pretty good, and I think it gives you a good feel of moving through the sailing age. I like it. I, I, I enjoyed the different actions I could take, constantly watching other players, what they did. You know, Even though there was not a whole lot of huge direct interaction, I'm very curious which cities and things you're taking aboard because you might be blocking me. You might take the thing I want, and I'm constantly watching your ships to see if you're moving to that next era, which will then make me lose points. Um, yeah, Mark Wallace really likes to make people lose points in games, and that's fine. Um, and you even start with five points so that you can lose some <laughs> at the beginning. And the game moves a little slowly at the, be at the beginning, but as you get more and more actions, you start uh, moving and chugging along at a higher pace. So that's Ships. It's certainly, if you like Martin Wallace's games, you should check it out. Um, you, some people who like the heavy strategy and brass and other games like that may be disappointed in this one, but for folks like me who are more in the middleweight Euro range, this one's a solid good game. Dice Tower of Judgment approved. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door! Yeah. Yeah.